The Carnegie Mellon Quarantine Database Talks are made possible by the Stephen Moy Foundation for Keeping It Real and by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you. All right, guys, thanks for coming to us for the uh, final talk this semester for the Quarantine Database Series. Uh, today we have Sean Ma, who's the Senior Technical Director at uh, PINCAP. Um, and so again, we, the way we do this every time is if you have any questions, please unmute yourself. Uh, ask your, say who you are, where you're coming from, and ask your question, and feel free to interrupt at any time. And, we, uh, and as always, we want to thank the Stephen Moy Foundation for keeping it real for sponsoring us this semester. And we want to thank Sean for doing this because it's 5 a.m. in China, uh, in Shanghai, where he's at. So we appreciate him getting up this early to talk to us about his database. So with that, Sean, go for it. The floor is yours. Hey, hello, everyone. So today I will bring you a talk about TidyB on the long journey of VegTap. Um, so a little bit about myself, I'm Sean Ma. Um, I'm the uh, product manager and tech lead of the real-time analytics team at BingCap. Um, previously, I'm a, uh, I was a tech lead of a big data infra team at NetEase Research. Um, my main interest focused on the um, distributed system and query engine construction. So TidyB has a lot of stories to tell, but uh, this time it will be told in the hashtag perspective. Um, from the very beginning, we um, we have a slogan about hashtag description. We said we are 100% uh, of transaction processing, but 80% uh, of analytical processing. So that's uh, that. Uh, that should be our slogan, like three years or four years ago. But it was very confusing because uh, people ask us why it is like eighty percent. It's not like 70, 79 percent, something like that. We cannot answer because eighty percent is just a number that come to our minds, and we just say that it's a little bit um, not as powerful as our TP design. So it's eighty percent, but it's just a number, no meaning. So we changed the slogan to something else. We said it's HTAP database instead of like 80% of AP. So um, HTAP was a fancy name back then. And I've, we think that it can cover the ability of our database. So we used that term. But it was a very, very long road to go after we used the HTAP term because we, we need to make it a really HTAP database so a little bit brief about the TidyB itself. Um, TidyB, it's Asian time. It's uh, inspired by Google Spanner. Uh, as we uh, always said that uh, Google Spanner, uh, mm, they built a nice architect architecture and uh, uh, we inspired by Google Spanner paper. And um, for the previous GA version, it's like a zero point something version. The TidyB was a uh, scalable database and it's built for MySQL compatible uh, because we want to uh, grab those users from MySQL world. And it's, it has the transparent sharding strategy and the sharding itself is in rate sharding. And also it built for a, cons a strong consistency and also the transactional support and regard uh, regardless of uh, the sharding existing. So basically you can consider TidyB as something like this. It's a very, very large size of MySQL for a user perspective. So um, for TidyB server, um, TidyB actually has uh, three, uh, two layers. The one layer is the TidyB server. TidyB server, you can consider it's a database front end. It's a, um, it's the it's the computation layer for the TidyB itself. So basically it's a stateless um, SQL layer and uh, it will not shuffle any data in between during the uh, query back then. Um, the TidyB itself is, um, is kind of like traditional, very traditional model or very traditional design because the um, upper, upper side of the database, even in a new SQL world, it's not quite different. It's just like you input SQL and AST builds and logical plan and optimization, those kind of things. It's nothing very special. Um, so it's a full-featured SQL layer. 
and we almost like made everything by ourselves. And um, for the optimizer, it's currently the CB, uh, RBO plus the CBO. It's not like purely uh, cascade style things. And we have secondary in that support and the amount on DDL. So um, more complicated things happens in the TIKV side. So the TIKV has two major components. It's a, it's a distributed storage. And uh, one component is placement driver. The placement driver itself is a, um, you can consider it something like a, both a scheduler uh, plus the time stamp oracle, um, because the um, because the uh, transactional model we are using is MBCC, so we need a time stamp oracle um, that will be touched later. And for the storage layer, uh, it's uh, a lot of different nodes from uh, of type KV. Um, when user reads or write data, they need to touch the placement driver first to locate the data where uh, which type KV nodes it is in and then it directly um, operate on the type AV. And always the client will have a cache about the metadata cache, about the placement uh, information, so it will not always go back to the uh, placement driver, always. And also the placement driver has uh, uh, embedded with some um, scheduling system, like um, it will do the uh, balance of the uh, storage based on capacity, or based on the workloads uh, pressure. So physically, um, TechEV is something like that. On the very top is the gRPC and, and it's the open API towards the outside world. And um, the lower layer is the transaction layer and also the MVCC. And these two layers are based on the top of a uh, uh, multi-raft. Multi-raft is a replication layer for us. Uh, it's uh, it is responsible to replicate the data for a single type AV, uh, for for a single piece of uh, information to um, to different different nodes and to guarantee that we have multiple copies. And also we have a consistent multiple views of the copies. And for the very lower layer is the RocksDB. Um, yeah, we, we had a RocksDB embedded inside because it's a perfect uh, choices for, for um, if you want to have a uh, server level of a key value store uh, of a library instead of another system. And uh, the whole system for the, um, for the KV side is built in Rust. Um, for, for the TidyB we just uh, introduced and also the placement driver, they are built in Go. So, um, so this is the internal or logical view of the uh, TIKV. So every, um, each of the data is been uh, cut into pieces um, by the primary key. The primary, uh, you can consider it's a global sorted, um, sorted data range in the primary key sort order. And uh, uh, the key sort order have later been cut it into different pieces, each of the pieces are we something we call a region? So that's basically the sharding um, in the distributed system uh, in distributed database. So um, so that's a range sharding strategy. And uh, every time that you um, you write new data into a single region, then the region might become bigger, and that that region might split. And for every table, uh, each of the table, it will be uh, cut into different pieces based on the primary key. And those pieces of regions will be replicated in raft replication group. And for each of the region, they will belong to, uh, or physically stored in different KV nodes to guarantee that we have free uh, physical replication of each of the piece of data. So for the region split and merge, so um, for region split and merge is very um, important for the rebalance um, because when we do the rebalance, we need to uh, guarantee that uh, each piece of the region being, um, being transferred will not be too big. Just consider that you have a, a single table that the table was empty and uh, after it been inserted a lot of data, if the region it will not be splitted, then it might become a huge region, something like um, say the 
one terabytes or something, then if in that size, um, the region transfer from one nodes to another nodes will be very heavy and my cost very uh, cost very heavy um very fierce uh um performance downgrade so that's why we need to uh, have the region in in almost like every uh almost like 100 megabytes in every size so after insert some new data um the region touches threshold or splits into two new regions so the split itself is not like a physical split. So basically it's a logical split inside a metadata and memory, and you create a new region, uh, create a new region info, and those new region will cover the new, uh, new start and end from a piece of data. And uh, when the compaction or uh, background work uh, is working, then the, mm, then the, uh, when the uh, if the region has been moved out, then the uh, real data will be um, will be removed. And if the region becomes too small because the data has been deleted, and we'll merge it back. So that's basically how we keep the uh, each piece of the region in um, in a suitable size, which is suitable for the region transfer and rebounds. And the table mapping is something like that because the, um, in previous slides we introduced that how we built a, um, a distributed KV. So that's not something very special. So for the SQL side, for user point, point of view, that they are using SQL, they are not using the key value uh, API. So we have a mapping strategy from the uh, SQL relational model into the KV API. So basically, that's uh, your primary key. And uh, your primary key will be uh, mapped to a key, and everything else will be mapped into value. So that's basically the rule. And also, the secondary index is nothing special. That's the um, the the index key itself will be um, encoded in as the key of the key value store, and uh, uh, the value will be the pointers to the or the primary key or the row ID pointers to the um, to the clustered uh, data. And transactional support. Transactional support is, um, mm, it's, you can read the Google Populator um, paper. It's the exactly, almost exactly uh, di uh, design based on that. So it's a, basically a two-phase commit, nothing very fancy. And we also have some um, optimization recently um, to do uh, like one PC to save some latency. And it's almost a decentralized design because the PD was the only centralized component in the transactional world, uh, in, in our transactional world, uh, serve as a timestamp oracle. Um, but with our optimization, we, uh, this will not be the bottleneck uh, usually for the for daily use bias um, because uh, every, every tidy B it will have a, a single single output channel to uh, to do the request. It's not like every threads or something. So basically, um, as long as you don't have like this tens of or, or hundreds of uh, different tidyb server, and PD will not be the uh, problem for the performance. And this transaction model is asset compliance and. Based on the uh, based on the key value system, and also the index itself, um, like if you insert a row data, and it might come with a couple of uh, a secondary indexes. So these kind of uh, index consistency are guaranteed by the um, by the transactional by the transaction itself. So that's basically a brief, very simple brief about the premature version of uh, TidyB uh, before its GA version. So we had, uh, we, are very, we were very happy when we built that SESTRA system and we, um, we sent the database into, uh, to our customers and say, hey, um, we have built a very good database that is distributed and you can use it as if it is the MySQL sharding cluster. So what about replace your um, online TP MySQL sharding cluster with a tidyb? But users are usually skeptical, so they said, um, is it very stable enough? It's a, 
it seems to be a very early early stage of the project how we can trust you so let's try it out as a secondary cluster to do the replication first so the tp debut becomes something like ap debut um, we ask the user is it good um it's pretty convenient to add real-time analytics well so we built a database that designed for transactional purpose, but uh, our very early stage users that are using it in uh, pure analytical use cases, they just uh, uh, use it as a backup cluster or as a, a real-time sync um, secondary cluster. And they do every um, real-time analytics or data servings on the TidyB cluster. So yeah. So why it's kind of special to suitable for the analytical processing. Um, so before the GA version, in the very early stage, we have such a features. It's very similar to the edge based features. Um, we, uh, it's a coprocessor. So for every um, TIKV nodes, it can process some of the um, computation to, CP, uh, to speed up the query. So basically the computation can be split into the TIKV is very simple. Um, basically, you can consider that the filtering and the partial aggregation and some top end calculation. So those kind of things can you can uh, uh, we can push down from the tidy uh, from the tidy B and to um, to have a partial plan in tidy B. Um, and after the thing, everything partial plan done in the tidy uh, in the tidy B, then the uh, the tidy B will gather all the partial results and to do the final calculation. So that's how the um, that's how the distributes um, coprocessor uh, co works. It's very similar to the um, to something that's uh, edge based coprocessor. So overall, the um, at a very early stage of the tidy B, it has such uh, features that are suitable for the real time analytics. So one is uh, it's it is scalable, so it can do the data integration. And because it's designed for TP, so it's very easy to have the TidyB as the secondary cluster to the uh, after uh, behind the uh, online databases, especially behind MySQL. And the, we can do the cross sharding queries because the um, query, the query engine, were regardless of uh, we're, we're we're not uh, the query engine were were just work on the cross shards environments. So for uh, for for the database that has been distributed, usually the um, uh, sharding cluster are uh, usually a proxy based to sharding cluster. Um, it has some limitations on the queries that across the shards, but that's not the case for us. And also, it had to uh, it can do the real time updates because it it is designed to be the uh, a TP TP oriented database. So it will not have the limitation of the uh, um, of the analytical database, which have the have a batch updates insertion support only. And also it's a scalable um, storage for multiple data sources. And, and comparing to the NoSQL, it has a secondary index. So that makes it a, um, a good choice for uh, data integration in real time. So actually that's from uh, one of our users. Uh, it, may be from, uh, it may be from NetEase use cases. So you can see that in early stage, the user use TidyBs as such. They have multiple uh, MySQL clusters in 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 uh, at their online online layer, and so they use the Syncer. Uh, Syncer was the uh, component for data migration or for the data online synchronization um, for TidyB, and they have a load balancer, and then the the data is being inserted into the TidyB. And their um, their core requests can directly go through the TidyB for some online or for some uh, real time uh, serving or analytics. So that's the uh, very common use cases for for our um, data in, data integration use cases. What what is PD in, in your diagram here? PD is the placement driver. So that's the timestamp oracle and also the scheduler. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So you can consider that something very similar to um to maybe something like Bigtable or Edge Base. So you have a scheduler to um 
to transfer the piece of data, uh, to transfer the sharding around to make everything balanced. And also we, um, we need to have a timestamp oracle. So that's also the PD. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. so, so monitoring, so, yes, yeah. so, sorry. So monitoring for, for your diagram on the right is the TiDB server the same as the green, green, green thing uh, uh, marked as TiDB on the left? I mean here? Or yeah. Is it, yeah, is this TiDB the same as the TiDB server on the right? Oh, uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, that's the confusing side. Um, yeah, because we don't have an extra name for the TiDB server itself, the computation layer or the front end layer. So this TiDB should be the should be the TiDB server. And that also confuses us, uh, our our customers or our community users sometimes. Because when mm -hmm. we say TiDB, it sometimes means the TiDB cluster or whole TiDB project, but sometimes it means means the TiDB server. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So is everyone happy now? Actually not. So after a year, after some, after a while, we um, we interviewed the users later after they've been using it for a while. So for a TP scenario, it works. And regardless if uh, it's not very stable because it's very early stage, uh, remember we are talking about the TIDB pre-GA version. It's not like the version right now. But for AP scenarios, it's like the end report is slow because uh, because they are analyzing a lot of data, and also uh, during the very big joins, the TIDB server my OM because it cannot shuffle data around, and also it 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 does not work well with the existing big data systems. So basically, the problem is like the match the computation power between uh, uh, versus the star scalable storage. So it looks like something a um, tiny head of the kingdom. You can you can order the the doll on the online market, online eShop uh, link here. So we have a scalable story system, but uh, uh, for for analytical purpose, the TIDB, the TIDB server is not indeed scalable. But for the TP transactional use cases, it's uh, it is scalable because you can insert, you can put multiple uh, TIDB servers. On top of the tech AV, and each of the transactions are very small and tiny, and uh, that scale well. But for the um, analytical purpose, uh, each of the queries are like super large. If you have like large amount of data being stored in a scalable database, a scalable storage system, you you got to have something like scalable um, computation layer, which can shuffle data around and to um, work together to um, deal with each single query. So, um, actually, we have different choices to make um, make it uh, scalable. And um, for now, the tidy, uh, for 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 even for now, the TIDB server itself cannot uh, cannot exchange data for a single query, and also for a TIDB. <clears throat> So basically, uh, at that time, we're taking a strategy like a scale up instead of a scale logs for the uh, for the computation layer. Um, and as discussed in the previous slides, that we have coprocessor, but coprocessor cannot do the full um, speed up for this uh, in a distributed mode. Uh, for example, it cannot do join because the join cannot be like just. Uh, split into partial plans and to just gather the final uh, partial results and to do the final computation. Um, when you do the join, you need to shuffle data around. And also for something like distinct counts, it cannot be speed up by the uh, coprocessor. So the two choice we um, we encountered, well, we had at the time was uh, first is the hard way to build TIDB or TIDB in um, distributed computation engine. Um, basically, we want a MPP framework, and that's a quite big change at a time. So, um, and uh, and also t uh, very risky and take a long time. Um, the real the real thing is like we don't have enough people to do that back then. It's like three years ago, and so the other choice is is like we embrace the ecosystem. Um, we can we can bring something else into our piece uh, into our uh, into our picture big picture. 
So what we do really, <clears throat> what we really happens was we build something called the Thai Spark. Um, so Thai Spark is something we um, leverage the big data ecosystem, especially Spark is a very, um, very well implemented um, unified um, computation engine. So what we do is like we build a plugin for the Spark and uh, we, uh, we hijacked the Spark plan and to transfer and rewrite into something we can we can reuse. Um, so basically, it's like when we have a Spark plan, logical plan, then we uh, we rewrite into something else. Like uh, we we rewrite into something that the later half can be pushed down to the tank KV, and uh, the upper half will be remaining in the Spark ecosystem or be remaining in the Spark engine and to compute. So uh, every time you send a query, then the query will be um, some some query like uh, aggregation or like the filtering will be pushed down to the TechEV processor. And when the Spark uh, get the results, uh, the Thai Spark plugin will tra uh, translate everything like metadata or the row decoding and back to the Spark uh, Spark format where it can understand. And the Spark itself will continue the computation so that's the um, the Thai Spark. So we leverage those kind of things as to our distribute temporarily distribute compute engine. So um, yeah, just like in previous slide sets, the some of the things will be pushed down, and some of the things will be remain in the Thai Spark. And this one is a tightly integration with the uh, Spark distribute system, a uh, Spark ecosystem. So um, after this thing's been done, um, we can we can reuse a lot of the ecosystem tools that Spark can uh, Spark uh, Spark uses. Uh, say that uh, we can do like we can connect to Zeppelin, and we also uh, through the Spark we can connect to some BI tools like uh, uh, like Tableau or or Cognos, those kind of things. <clears throat> And also some of the users that use it in um, in a lot of different Spark way, like uh, using using it with a uh, uh, scripting a uh, scripting language, and also use it in the BI, maybe maybe some AI, AI is just for fun. Um, back then we don't have any like machine learning users, and also do some ETLs. Do you so have to modify Spark to do this, or is it the Spark Spark provide an API so that you can plop in? Tie Spark without ever having to modify anything above in, in the Spark. You don't need to modify something. It's like when you plug, uh, when you do the plugin inside, then okay. you can use everything just as the uh, Catalyst engine to write SQLs. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the use cases. Uh, I remember is uh, is one of the fresh food uh, fresh food e commerce company by I forget the name, but. Um, they built their um, tidy B, they using their tidy B as their real time um, data store or real time data warehousing. So the uh, the data being channel channeled in uh, uh, from the SQL Server via Kafka or um, and the Flume, and they use tidy B for some. Uh, they use tidy B to store all the data from both the uh, SQL Server and MySQL, and some of the real-time data serving are from the TidyB instance or TidyB server instance, and they do some data science or uh, BI tools things and uh, using a TidySpark plugin. And also the TidySpark plugin will be the bridge and they can transfer archive some of the data, uh, some, of the, some of the code data back to the Hadoop. So is everyone happy now? So no. Tie Spark uh, provides actually Apache Spark provide a uh, kind of like brutal force computation with uh, with low concurrency, but some of the time uh, sometimes that people need more than that because they they have like a smaller scale of uh, queries they they want everything like in more interactive way, um, and Spark is not very suitable for that. So we got to turn back. And we're back to the start and to uh, enhance our, our tidyb server at the time. So 
what we did was like so we up in my, this. how long did you go with Ty Spark before you said like all right this is a bad idea we gotta we gotta bandage it's not like a bad idea we're still using it even for right now but it's okay. not like covering every scenarios we want we hope for uh, we hope it to be the uh, distributed engine for every scenarios for analytical use cases. But we find it's like for some like uh, more agile or more like uh, smaller queries, they are not suitable. Especially um, because our users are basically more like a DBA; they are not like application developers for big data sites. So uh, for for most of the DBA here we encountered, they don't quite. A, a fan of big data system because big data system is more for like engineering um kind of uh, developer kind of style of uh, uh, world so dba have a very bad experience about a spark so they 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 are not willing to um maintain anything like a type spark or uh, any any kind of uh, big data things so yeah so that's the uh that's also a major reason that we turn it back to I guess some, my question is, how, how long did it take you to get TieSpark up and running? Maybe that's a better question. Like, was it like, because it's just a plugin, you don't modify it, with Spark. So it's like something someone could get running, like a single engineer got running in a month, or is it yeah, a, a major months. It's not like a single month, because Spark, uh, so the things need to be done is like, uh, first you do the uh, metadata transferring. So basically you um, say that you, you, you have the type system rebuilt for, from, uh, for the encoding and decoding. And also the stats, uh, statistics to read from the Spark, and also you have a um, hacky way to uh, hijack the Spark plan and to rewrite it in something else. So uh, it basically it's like a free, free man months. We have two people. It's like two, uh, one month to have a prototype, and the other month to polish it to something like production use case, uh, production use usage. All right, thank you. That's impressive. Mm -hmm. So uh, after the tie spark, we have uh, uh, we uh, back to enhance our own system. So we basically optimize around the single nodes TDB because for for those like smaller queries, a single nodes is really the way to go. So um, we made it become smarter and more efficient, more efficient and smaller in a uh, in a smaller scale of use cases. For optimizer, um, for the very beginning, like uh, the pre GA version, it you cannot really call it the TidyB have an optimizer. It's just something like um, you, you carry the ST around and to do the computation, just like any premature the database that might have. And later we changed it to uh, RBO plus CBO. <clears throat> and yeah, you can consider it's like a totally rewrite of uh, the optimizer layer. And now uh, it's not like, uh, yeah, and now, it, we are experimental. Um, we ha we are experimenting on the uh, cascade model to expose more uh, optimization chances. Um, for execution, we um, for the very G, uh, very early version, we have the classic volcano model. It's like row by row computation and row wise execution. And later, for the analytical purpose, we change it back. Uh, change it to the batch. Uh, first, we change it to the batch execution, and then we change it to the to the vaporized execution for all the uh, different components in the TIDB coprocessor co and also in the TIDB um, and the type flash. So that's a, a diagram from the from the enhancements uh, to show the enhancement we made um, from the very early version to the uh, 2.0. So you can see that for TPCH, it's a um, very huge uh, boost after the uh, restructure and redesign. So is everyone happy now? We still have a uh, key conflicts we haven't resolved yet. So um, because we don't have a, a columnar engine, and um, a lot of the time the people, our users, or our competitors challenge uh, challenge us is like. Without the column store, how you can say that it's an edge type database? <clears throat> and so, the real other biggest problem challenge is like there's no workload isolation at a time. Um, users needs to um, run all, every query uh, on top of the same storage system. 
So um, very often, that if they run something like a test bar queries or like a very big analytical queries, then the storage system were were like shaking, and so the TP workloads will not be stable. So the workload interference is very um, is very very big problem for us because TP workloads is very fragile. It's just like a small boat on the in in the sea, and when the AP query is running, they they tend to grab the every resource they they can have, and to run to try to compute a single big query as soon as possible. So that's not something that two can can be merged or can can live inside the same world together happily. So we have hard questions to choose between the. Mm, the two sides. Actually, we had some um, have some intermediate design try to solve the problem. It's like we we first like design the storage system to be um, to divide the, the resource into different lanes, and we give it the uh, we give the TP a, a independent uh, thread pool and also the AP independent thread pool. But actually, it's not a good idea. Say that. When AP query is running, it even using a very small thread pool of uh, resources, but it grab the resources and never give it back. So even with very limited threads, it can cause very high CPU contention. <coughs> so after different trials and uh, errors, then we decide to have another component to um, solve two problems once together. One problem is like we need to have a column store and to isolate the resource. And also we want to isolate the resources to different nodes. So that's what we call the type flash. Um, so it's a distributed common storage and um, as a companion of a type KV. So uh, it's a, uh, it uses a rough learner to replicate the data from the type KV into the column store format. So uh, at resource perspective, uh, you can dedicate uh, totally different machines to to run type flash, and we'll do the async uh, replication from the from the type KV nodes, uh, and also the follower reads and learner reads or uh, read protocols defined by the wrap paper. So plus the MVCC uh, together, these two two things together, it can provide a consistent snapshot read. And also, um, so that provides us a perfect uh, workload isolation. And also partially, uh, the code base is partially based on the ClickHouse. So that's why we have three languages in our system. One is Go for the TidyB server, and the other is a Rust for the TidyB. And now we have a uh, bring, the, bring the ClickHouse code base in. So we have C++ code base as well. So this is the diagram of uh, the whole uh, TidyB. So the new TidyB design. So for the um, for the left uh, lower parts is the storage layer, and for the right hand side is the uh, TidyB. And as you can see, that uh, for each region of the data, if you choose to have a, a column store replication, then it will use a, a learner protocol to asynchronously. Transfer data from the type uh, KV to the type flash. Um, so, why this is uh, not a, a hard line is is something because it's asynchronization, uh, asynchronous uh, replication. So that means even if the type flash nodes goes down, it will not impact the uh, uh, normal transactional uh, processing. And the uh, type uh, type itself. Uh, we'll use the CBO, the uh, cost-based model, to choose the uh, right access path. So if user does not define that, uh, does not have the trigger that like they, they want the perfect isolation, they put the TidyB to do the choice, then the TidyB will do the cost model um, choices. And just like how database to uh, choose a uh, single indexes, you will read the stats and to, um, to compute if it is a suitable workload for the type flash then it will route the uh, queries into time flash. So basically, time flash have uh, mm, basically in in 
uh, so basically type flash itself is an updatable column store. So naively, we think that column store is not fit for uh, online updates. So um, traditionally, data warehousing um, databases, they uh, support only like, um, like batch updates like every hour or every day based on the prime. Uh, so updates considered um, not easy based on the primary key, but it's not absolute. So, um, so usually people use something called Delta main. Uh, it's divided the column engine into two pieces. One piece is, is like the um, the write optimized uh, area. The other piece is the read optimized area. So that's what we do as well. Um, I think a lot of uh, different engines do the same thing. Um, for example, the C store. I, I consider C store to be something similar. They have a um, they have a, a database embedded. Uh, for the for the in, uh, online insertion, and they uh, gradually compact everything to a stable version of Common Store, and also the web rise, and also Kudu. A lot of things do, did that before, and we are not something very new. We just um, borrow a lot of idea from different systems. So we have to design something like that. Um, uh, so for the first version, we use the Um but it seems not. Uh, uh, for our perspective, it seems not uh, very optimal for the read performance because CLSM tree have too many layers, and uh, between each of the layers there are overlappings. So when you do the read, you need to do a an end way merge. So that's what the performance uh, degradation comes from. So later we um had a new design. We um divided uh the divided the whole data in a way like a tree. So you can consider something like either the B tree or segment tree. So <clears throat> the piece of data uh, were not each piece of data will not have overlapping, but uh, uh, but each uh, each of the leaf nodes will have two sections. One section is the uh, right optimized sections, so it's uh, delta sections, and the other section is the stable sections. For <clears throat> from time to time, we need to maintain the delta sections. And to compact it together with the stable sections, so that's the uh, that's our new design. You can com uh, consider it's basically something like a, com a combination of a B plus tree and the LSM tree. It uh, it can be com considered as a B plus tree because it's um, um, it's it has very similar structure. Um, the only different thing is like it have very huge uh, leaf nodes, and is. It is also similar to the um, to the LSM tree because it has a stable, and uh, it has the uh, you can consider it's a two layer of uh, LSM tree. For the delta layer, you can consider it's a memory table, but indeed it can be dumped into the uh, into the disk. And the stable layer is the uh, tier one; it's a layer one. So from time to time, it need to be combined and compacted to a better um, better organized better organized way. So by doing so, we can avoid the multiple uh, multi-way merge. So that will speed up the uh, speed up the scan uh, query. And as I said, it's uh, asynchronous because we are using rough learner to replicate the data. So it's a asynchronized way to repli uh, to replicate the things. So that avoids any interference uh, from the AP side to the TP side. So say that TP, your your AP type flash nodes uh, was brought down. Um, it were uh, if you're using a uh, strong, consistent, synchronized way to replicate the data, then the the transactional the TRKV might must need to wait for the uh, the type flash nodes um, back up. But uh, for an asynchronized uh, replication, we need we don't need to wait for that. But the the cost is like how you keep consistent read. So the way we do that is like we um we use the rough learner read, a uh, rough follow read, and also the follow read is essentially the uh the the algorithm we're using, and uh, together with the MVCC strategy we can um, provide a strong consistency. So the things like uh when TidyB uh submit a query to um uh when TidyB insert a data in time one in T one a T zero in the timeline. Then after it's uh, it's been inserted and in the T T one timeline, it uh it submitted a query. 
So for the T2, when the TypeFlash received the query request, it will not directly uh, respond based on its own data. It will first send a read index query, a read index request back to the leader nodes, uh, back to the reader leader replica. <clears throat> ask if there's anything um, newer or more fresh than the things we hold. Uh, in this diagram, the TypeFlash nodes is uh, replicating in a raft uh, in a raft way, and the progress is uh, free because raft is like uh, the log of a raft is like a linear. So you can consider each raft log replication can have a progress number. So in this diagram, the progress number is three. So it asks for if there's newer log uh, raft entries being to be appended. So uh, in this diagram, the the there's a newer entry is like four. And after the tab flash nodes received the answer that we have a newer entry, it will block until the newer entry data comes in, and then it will provide a return back the read results. So uh, together with the NECC, so after after it read back the data, it will use the timestamp for the read query. Uh, everything that newer than the timestamp will be uh, will be uh, will be discarded. So these two together, then we can have the um, strong consistent read. So it guarantees that everything being right being written can be read back. And also we can have a strong, uh, uh, can have a consistent snapshot. So that's how we uh, implement a asynchronized replication, but a strong consistent read. So previously on, on TidyB Edge Tab, the feature is like, we're not building a separate database like mm -hmm. The people you need to choose that if you're using the TP side or AP side, or like 100% of TP or 80% uh, of AP, that's not a thing right now. So we are building a edge type that, in a way that when the data being written, then you can you can have both uh, uh both replication uh, both the row store formats and the column store format combined, and it's always keep uh, keep up to date. So the um, the analytics on the on the TidyB is not like a fresh data. So it provides you always the latest data as uh, described before. Um, but the TypeFlash itself, it can also be used as the uh, a column store indexes. Um, when you don't use the TidyB as the uh, your major transactional databases, sometimes you use it a pure analytical service. Um, so you can consider at that time the column store is not a um, isolated column uh, um, mirror, so it can be served as a column uh, column indexes, and the CBO will decide uh, which index are the best suitable index for a, a specific query. So for use cases, um, a very easy, uh, a very common use case that you can very easily think about is. Um, some users use the TidyB in this way. Um, previously, they have a MySQL um, for their um, online applications, and they, uh, from time to time, they need to move the data from MySQL into analytical databases. And then um, they have a BI services on the on on top of that. And after switch to the TidyB, then it can have both combined into one database. They can have the APP server on the online APP server on TidyB. And also, they can have the BI um, BI reporting directly on TidyB as well. <coughs> and some of the users uh, are using it like this way. They have their online applications um, in TidyB, and also they have the CDC to channel out the data um, uh, via Kafka, and they have the Flink as their uh, aggregation or uh, transformation engine, and to insert it back to the TidyB, and the online data will be transformed. So the Flink is serves something like a real-time materialized view, and uh, the more BI-oriented services will be on top of the 
uh, materialize the data. So is one, everyone happy now? So the story being told up to now is like the story uh, happens that uh, within this year. So the timeline has been progressed into this year. So the things not good is like, um, actually there, um, there are quite a few things that we're not uh, happy with. The one is like um, the test bar is not, uh, for now it's still the only distributed engine for the type B ecosystem. We, we need a, a na native, uh, native computation engine, which is in the distributed framework. For um, these, um, this engine will be built for those like medium sized or, or small sized interactive cases. Um, because um, Spark is using the MR style shuffle, and also a lot of things are designed to be like more uh, ETL style. So we want a uh, our our native engine to be something like MP style instead of like MR style, and also um, because the because of the design that described it before, the data has been directly channeled from the TechB side into uh, into type, uh, type flash side. So the data is always uh, so. There's very little chances for us to insert any transformation in between. So because the data is almost equally just from the transpose from the row store to the column store, so we don't have any chance to insert any um, ETL or any data transformation. So we need to have something like data transformation. So um, our distributed engine is almost done. It's making, um, we're, we're making a clear house to, uh, making the time flash to um, combine together to work as a um, MPP framework. So, um, so still using a tidyb as a single entrance for the front end. So we're using, we're sharing the same parser and also share uh, sharing the um, almost the same optimizer, um, but with an extra um, distributed planning stage. So the thing is something like that. Um, user when user use the uh, send queries, then um, it might switch the modes. If it is a, a MPP mode, then we're sent back to the um, to the uh, MPP cluster. And if it is a TP transactional modes uh, queries, then we we'll go through directly the optimizer and directly uh, read the tech KV. So um, for now, the MPP cluster cannot read directly from the tech KV yet, but the uh, later uh, next streaming, uh, next uh, development cycle, we want to make it um, possible to uh, read directly both through row store and the column store, so that will expose more chance for optimization. Um, the performance looks prom promising, but it's not something like um, done yet. So for all the performance charts here in the type flash MPP, uh, some of the queries we need to hand tune if it is using the broadcast joins or using the hash shuffle joins, uh, because the optimizer is not uh, very uh, quite done yet. Um, but if uh, you can consider if everything, uh, if the choice of uh, uh, the join uh, join operator is like okay, then that's will be the that will be the uh, the thing that we can we can get. Um, so the compare uh, the comparison is between the two engines. So uh, for the test park engines, we're uh, we're still using the um, using the type flash as the storage system. For the time flash and PP system, we're using the same start system, but a different computation engine. So that's the performance difference. It's uh, it's still in a premature um, stage. So you can consider that in the uh, in the future it might be faster next year, spring something. Uh, it's not a full uh, complete uh, TPCH. Some something is like. Uh, we, we just put some of the results here. Um, for real-time transformation, it's, uh, so previous slides, we also showed a use case for real-time transformation. So real-time trans transformation is very important for us because for most of our use cases are in real time. Um, if it is like something like mm, not real time, then people might use something else. They can, they have a lot of other uh, traditional data warehouse or data lake system to be choose. They might choose Hadoop or they might choose something like uh, like ClickHouse or like something else or 
Um, so when people use TidyB as their uh, analytical uh, choices, they usually want something is uh, real time. They want fresh data. So, but for the design right now we have, we don't have any chance to insert any um, transformation. So uh, Apache Flink becomes something um, very handy for us. Uh, when we do the user interview, we find that uh, even before we advertise or marketing around the, the two solutions combined, we already have a lot of users just using TidyB together with a uh, Apache Flink. So it's kind of like perfect match somehow. Um, for the Flink side, um, TidyB is a perfect sync for the Flink because it provides both a row store and a column store for um, different uh, use cases. And it, uh, even for the column store, it, it can provide online updates. So that's a lot of system cannot do. So before the TidyB, um, the Flink had two choices. One is like they use a, a new SQL store. Uh, they, they use a NoSQL store, but the NoSQL store cannot provide uh, enough that the SQL or the computation ability, uh, or they can use something. Um, if the data source is not like updating, it's a panel lead, and then they can they can use something like Hadoop Data Lake, and to directly put the data down to the Hadoop. But uh, uh, in that case, they were they were not dealing the change uh, the change data well. Um, also for TidyB side, it's a uh, both a streaming framework to transform the data. But they also can um, do the batch workloads like the uh, like the Spark can do. So it seems like a perfect match somehow. So is when everyone can be done. Um, I'm not sure. Um, every time we are um, talking to customers, then they bring something new ideas. Maybe next uh, in next stage we'll do some something like a um, incremental materialized view, or uh, we uh, we're already building something like allow the type flash to be an independent first class storage system. Then TidyB can directly write into the um, write into the column storage instead of like a, a write to the row storage and then think to the column storage. Um, yeah, so. There are a lot to do, and we'll think hard and work hard, and we'll see if that fit the customer needs. Thank you. Awesome, thank you. So I will applaud on behalf of everyone else. Uh, so again, we have a few minutes. Uh, open the floor to any questions. Please unmute yourself and ask Sean directly. Okay, so uh, uh, um, I, mean, I know you didn't talk much about the optimizer, um, and and I was dealing with the, the baby pooped his pants while you were talk, talking. So I, I miss I miss a middle part. Sorry. Uh, how are you guys collecting statistics? Are you running analyze? Are you are you computing statistics as the data comes in? Uh, what's your general approach to this? Oh, we're running analyze. So there's uh, like faster analyze and the full analyze different modes, and uh, we're using a. a um, and previously, we were using two different kinds of things. One is like histogram, the other is the same sketch. And now we find like um, we might focus on only the histogram. So the faster analyze will uh, collect only some, a few of the data, and the full analyze will, will, will do, the, do, do the heavy work. And we, um, we don't, I, I think we don't still have the, um, the end, like the, the, um, statics that to be fixed when the data comes in. So, be clear, so you said you guys had sketches and you had, you had like a countman sketch and then you had a histogram and you guys abandoned the sketches. Oh, true. Yeah, and the same sketch is based on, uh, is for both, uh, mostly for the uh, point queries and for the optimize, uh, for the uh, other things that we rely on the histogram. But recently we find that maybe histogram is a better idea. We might like abandon the same sketch part. So, so super interesting because because so the the the, the co-founder of Splice Machine he told me the exact opposite. He said like we were using histograms, you were using sketches, and then we, they they switch over to the Yahoo sketching library, and then they they abandoned all their histograms. I I, I find that super interesting. Uh, okay, um, have you guys considered? I mean, it's been work out of Berkeley and a bunch of other places on using like neural networks for instead of histograms. Have you looked at any of that, or is that too far far in the future for you guys? Uh, actually, I'm not sure because uh, the 
optimizer is based on uh, optimizer is totally on the other team. So okay, that will be a question oh, yeah. I'm not quite familiar with. That's fine. Yeah, it's just the, the optimizer part is super interesting to me. That I always ask questions when I see people talk, talk about it. Um, the <laughs> I'm very sorry. No, that's, that's okay. That's okay. So with um, again, I, I apologize. You might have said this already missed this. The integration with Flink, right? Again, that's just sitting on the outside, right? Tie Flash itself does not rely on it. Is that correct? I mean, if, uh, can you repeat your question? Sorry. Like with, with Flink, like it's not like the the story with Spark, Tie Spark was that like you guys added a connector so that Spark can, right. can read from Tie uh, mm -hmm. KB. With Flink, it's it you didn't, did you add the same kind of connector or is it just people are, are people are just running Flink on the outside? Well, people from um, running from outside. Also, for Tie Spark is from outside. We didn't uh, try to combine it together with our uh, with our own products. Okay. So basically, the Flink thing is like um, um, uh, during the Tie Spark, we already have a very fat client uh, which can encode, decode, and translate metadata, and also yep. do some plan transformation. So when the community, so actually Flink integration is uh, driven by community. So community just take the uh, fat clients of the of the of the Tie Spark and to directly insert into the uh, into the Flink. It were uh, yeah it. It's kind of like because of the previous work is easier to do in the fling. Okay, I understand. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, any last question from the audience? Okay, Sean, again, thank you for doing this. Really appreciate you getting up early to give a talk with us. Really appreciate it. Um, mm -hmm. All right, guys, this is it for the for the quarantine data seminar series, the end of the semester, uh, end of the year. We've had 30 talks. Uh, it's very exciting. Everything will be on YouTube uh, soon soon after. And again, we want to thank Stephen, the Stephen Moy Foundation for sponsoring us this, this entire semester. Uh, and we're looking forward to everyone coming back next year in 2021. Hopefully we'll have vaccines and then we'll, we'll be able to still, you know, keep talking about databases. Okay?